we want to uh, move it together. So why are you doing some long faces in the morning? It is an unhealthy thing. God does not deal with us uh, according to our transgression. That's what also punish us uh, during our iniquity. So as the heavens are higher above the earth, so great is his mercy towards uh, those who fear him. You need to learn to extend uh, mercy to other people because you also need uh, mercy. He that shows mercy, Hosea says, is going to reap uh, mercy. I get away with a lot of things uh, because I let other people also get away with uh, a lot of things. It is about sowing and reaping. So, I don't want to say as far as in the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Verse 13, and as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Do so you need to have a father's heart? Imagine when uh, Joshua was uh, five or four. Will you pick up a fight with Joshua? <laughs> you know that there is not much uh, sense. Even if he's putting up a tent floor, you will ignore it. And sometimes even children, they will come and slap you and run away. Will you go and approach that baby? So you see, when we grow up, we forget that parent's heart. The pastor needs to have a father's heart. They don't have many people in talk to me, and then they call me back when they But you need to see them like just children, no matter if they are 60 years old. In your heart, you need to see them as a Children, your husband as well. If he picks up a fight with his wife all the time, it won't work. Because, like we saw in the marriage uh, training for six months, the husband is supposed to become the father. Because you come under your father to be under a he that becomes uh, the father figure in your life. So, if he fights with you all the time, then that's not the uh, Right, he has not understood this. The father role that is supposed to play in your life. Now, the woman is supposed to become the mother. Hello, angel. He's supposed to become the mother to the man. So, you should not only be running with a woman to share his emotional uh, problems, you should now share them with uh, you. So you are playing the role of the father to him, he's playing the role of the father to you. And if you look at one another in those, uh, with those eyes, then there will be no fights at all. You are going to understand why they are behaving uh, like that. If you were to visit your father and uh, you did something that you wish is a good father, some parents. That's not a problem. But no matter what I do, my mom would never put me up outside of the house. I don't understand some parents that uh, drive your children outside of the house. It is the child that always leaves the house. The father, the parent, is never supposed to the child uh, out. It is the prodigal son that left uh, the house. And they knew what they have done. The father is always going to receive me back if I repent. And children must know that you have love and your heart, that you are forgiving, extend uh, mercy. So that's how God deals with us. For he knows how to pray, he remembers. That we are dust. People have flaws. I have many flaws. And unfortunately, many people think that the pastor is not going to put mercy on you. 
<laughs> because you know me from afar. I talk a lot only about Jesus. I can talk from morning to evening about the Jesus. But if it's not about Jesus, I don't talk. I can stay in my room for six weeks, not talk to anybody. And I'm not depressed. Before becoming a pastor, I hated when I became a pastor because I had to talk to people. I was happy at home as a prophet, talking with the Lord, having my vision. Nobody, for six weeks, I'm fasting 40 days and 14 other six weeks, and then the one after that fast is another month. So, all together, three months, I'm not talking to anybody. That is my true nature. So you are seeing someone, yes, the Lord have to force me to talk about. I don't like to talk. And many times I switch off my phone. So you can be very, very angry with me. This lady doesn't know she's supposed to call me. And I'll be activated by internet. Because I want just uh, to be quiet. My mom used to be very angry with me because I would leave my phone at home and I would go. She can only call me in the evening. She said, But you have a phone by you. But did you can't wait. I don't like uh, to talk for the sake of uh, talking. People have uh, flaws. But now, when you live with people, you need to go out of your comfort zone. Are you with me? I need to change a little bit. And you also need to understand where I'm coming from so we can work together. Everybody has a flaws. There's no one who is a perfect. So if you extend the mercy, People also are going to be able to understand where you are coming from. And they are going to extend mercy back to you. Now, why don't you then always think that something has happened to a person that's why they will not make it? We are all the work in progress. None of us has arrived yet. And no matter how you think that you are better than the other one, because the problem is we compare ourselves with uh, people. If I compare myself with uh, the disciples, it will look like I am better. But uh, the standard or if I compare myself to other pastors, it looks like I'm doing well. But those who compare themselves with uh, others, they are not wise as they fall to the Corinthian church. Our standard is Christ uh, Jesus. So when I read the Bible and I see what he expects of me, I know that I'm fully showed of the glory of God. So extend mercy to others. And it does not matter how many years you are going to be the faith. We are going to go from glory to glory to one degree of transformation to another degree of transformation. Paul tells us in uh, Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 to verse 16. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. To verse 16, Paul says, Not that I have already attained or I am already perfected. No, the great Paul who had encounters with Jesus, he said, No, my brethren, not but like that. I've not already attained, I've not even been perfected yet, but I'm not saying that okay, I just need to stay where I am. No. I am pressing on. I want that uh, tomorrow's version of what the is going to be a better version. 
You could not stand me when I was not a Christian. I was very arrogant. Very arrogant. I remember I was having a conversation with a uh, guy that was about 10 years older than I. He was a lecturer when I was still in other class. And I was telling him my vision. And this, this, and that. The royal school that I went to attend, and I went to a new school. And the guy was so angry. So he's he had a, a glass table. He slapped his glass table and it uh, was completely broken. He, he was black and he became red in his face. So I could share my vision. And you are going to be so angry because when you are going to compare your vision, your vision is like a rubbish. That's why I got in trouble with my brother like in Joseph. So the problem was not the other people, the problem was uh, me. How can you share a real vision without making other people uh, angry? Without antagonizing uh, everybody and actually including them. So you have to be free. You have to humble uh, yourself. And because of so my choices, because of my physical nature, lots of people thought that I was uh, violent. Because I used to wear, I used to play rugby and I was very, well, I had lots of muscles, the fasting of uh, all my muscles. So people were afraid of me. And it was good when I was playing rugby because I would just open my eyes and go one way. But I understood. Yes, God was good. And I was a bouncer. So when I would just look at the feet, it comes away already. But now I started to speak softly so that people will actually know like, it's actually nice. It's not uh, that aggressive. And you sometimes have to change the way you are portraying yourself and understand how people are like viewing you. In the place of work and uh, work on uh, yourself. So we've not uh, arrived uh, yet, but we are pressing on. So when you are reading your Bible truly, you are looking at the mirror. How can I improve myself? Become a better person. That uh, tomorrow, people are not even be going to be able to recognize uh, the new me because it is completely different from the old version of myself. So I'm pressing on, and I am laying hold of that for which Christ uh, has already laid. Christ has a picture in his mind how you want uh, any angels to be. He has a picture how you want uh, Sammy to be. And this is your responsibility and by the help of uh, the word of God, the church, to receive the word of God and to apply it uh, in your life. And it's going to help every aspect uh, of your life. Spirit, soul, body, career, everything. So Paul also decided to forget the things that are behind. He said, forgetting the things that are behind. You need to forget your mistakes. Yes. You need to say, okay, I was uh, ignorant in those days. But I should not be living my whole life in guilt and condemnation. Because of my, some of my past, I can't change it. Are you with me? I can't. Let me share a testimony with you. When I was in the previous church, or in Manchester, I got saved because I was not always a Christian. I was I went into the world and I came back. And when I was into the, the world, I was drinking a lot, smoking a lot, and I was in nightclub from uh, Tuesday to Sunday morning. 
Monday, I put on the book of the nine dogs for the video. Let you put it in the world in the night clock. Uh, and night clock, what you were doing, scripting. It was protecting all those uh, naked women. But what I was doing, and it was paying the loss of money, and I was me. Nobody is going to touch that 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 book. I was there. But I won't do anything wrong. I just like uh, that so called uh, atmosphere, party. I've left the Lord. Then I received Jesus and I came back. So they saw me in church, quiet, the way I was before when I was a Christian. They said, Oh, this is a good man. Some mothers in the church, one of their sister pastor, she had a, a daughter. But uh, two years older, no, four years older than I, she was already thinking, this is a good house, potential house, my son. They invited me to the house to eat. I said, I will come later after I've given my testimony. Because I knew what was in the mind. I know some time of thoughts of me. It has been a problem for me for, since I was a child. So I can hear what people are thinking sometimes, not always. So I know they, they were thinking that I was another person. I said, no. I need to tell you my testimony that if you still want to receive me, then I receive me. And uh, I postponed that dinner in the house. One Wednesday, once Friday evening during the, the service of uh, prayer and uh, testimony. In prayer, I have a testimony. They thought that I would give a testimony that uh, graduated. Uh, but in John, that is the testimony that we hear in church. But when people were baptized by John the Baptist, when they say they confess their sins uh, publicly, there is power when you confess your sin publicly. Satan is put to shame. He knows that you will never go back there. That's why the KJV, they want you to keep your drinking, your a clear secret so that they can continue to blackmail you. They want you to keep your drug addiction uh, secret so that they can blackmail you and get information. You are never going to be bold in your faith. That's why before Obama became the president, there's the leaking tapes of him smoking weed. Are you with me? It is deliberate. You need to expose the unfruitful work of that study. Anything that will have anything that will blackmail you. Once you expose it, the power is up, broken. That's why as soon as the Trump wanted to be president, then the VP paper was leaked. Because it is not a, a conspiracy. It is the secret conspiracy. Because we don't want to be a puppet of Russia, our enemy. We want to make everything about your life that you need. So it's already out there in the open. And then when you access office, Satan has now nothing to blackmail you. The lots of you are still bound because your mouth is a you. Which kind of is the right thing? It's like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The church said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The church praise the Lord. I say, how about your testimony? The Lord has saved me. I vaccinated for 18 months. I was drinking every day. At least two bottles of whiskey every day. Jack Daniel was my thing. Manipu was my thing. Hallelujah. I knew the things. Tequila was my thing. When I came to the UK, uh, I don't know. They had one of Smirnoff. That red or blue Smirnoff bottle. And I was drinking, drinking. I used to smoke sometimes four packs a day of cigarettes. They nicknamed me Jesus because after I had one and the spread came out. I need another one, but they called me Jesus because there was always smoke coming out of my uh, That pastor's wife, she just put the head like that. She said, This is not the husband's wife. But I missed Also, Free, whom the soul has made free, free. And the 
said to begin from a black man before God, we all have a past. We all have a past. So extend mercy to the other person. And once you come to Christ, make up your mind. Do not go back to your world. Go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Keep pressing on in the name of Jesus. Now, coming on A, because we are dealing with giving people the benefit of the doubt. So we want to see the beginners level. The beginner level. It is in righteousness you shall judge your friends or your neighbors. Because we are going to go from glory to glory. Let us start with the beginners. Level. God says, in righteousness you shall judge your friend or your neighbor. Now, this is taken from Leviticus chapter 19. Verse fifteen and sixteen. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse fifteen and sixteen. And the Lord said, "Let me just read verse fifteen, verse sixteen. Sorry, you shall go. You shall not go about." Uh, Bearer among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the, the life of your neighbor. For I am the Lord. Now, the end of verse 15 says, Now, you shall be no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the first of the or who is mighty. Righteousness, you shall judge your neighbors. What does it mean that in righteousness or with the righteous judgment, I'm supposed to judge my friends? It means I must give a benefit of the doubt to the person. So I'm going to concoct that glory to exonerate my friends. Ah, the difference is that I'm going to concoct the bad story to exonerate Sister Minion for what she has done. Do you know why the past is sitting from? Not that the bad. You don't know. You think it is a position of honor. The reason the past is sitting from, and uh, he's trying his best not to look backwards. In the views. Is it because he doesn't want to know who did not come to pay? Some are arriving, but it's not arriving. Because if he's at the back, they can't see who did pay and so on and so forth. So he's staying in front of the doctor so they can focus on Jesus. And then he's only going to know who has the right, who has not the right, and he's going to start not being happy. And if he doesn't see Sammy, he needs to confess the story in his mind. He needs to confess the backstory to exonerate, to make an excuse for Sammy for not being here. Maybe the boss was not functioning today. Maybe uh, the story must only be a positive story. Remember, the people will benefit from that. Why is Pastor Rosemary not here this morning? Why? Really? I don't know. And then she said, okay, she will send, uh, she'll be joining God. So, okay, what, for what reason? I don't know. Maybe something uh, happened. Are you with me? So, you need to train yourself so, to have a story in your mind to exonerate it so, at the for your own uh, good because you don't want uh, to be having uh, grudges in your heart. 
I'm in the plan of God. What do you mean? So some people can be going through things. They will not tell you. So that's why I just give them the benefit of them. Yeah. Until they will not tell you. Actually, the reason why I will not answer your phone for this is because when I was it on the cable, I did took my phone away. <laughs> That's why for 42 days you could not reach me. I'm so sorry. And you are dying. You with me? I was talking to a brother yesterday, no, last week, Friday. And uh, he was supposed to call me, he was supposed to have a room. Most of the time, I don't need phone close by me by 10 p.m. Some people still can break it, depends on something. They called me at uh, 1 a.m. And what I was talking about was already angry. Because, like I said, they know my rules, so if they broke my rules, it means that it must be important. And uh, I thought they were in another country. And they were not in that country. They had a travel. And they were in Morocco. And uh, an earthquake was uh, happening. The houses were falling. They had to come up the house. And there were more than 800 dead people in that uh, city. But they were in. So, give them the benefit of the doubt. That's this is the one more thing that they are doing, breaking your rules and answer the phone. And you're going to realize that there is something that will be serious that isn't taking the place. You live your life in such a way that you always complete the story to exonerate people in the beginning. Now, when you pick up the phone, then you realize that it was nonsense. <laughs> then that's when you put some. Uh, 
one to raise it up. And it was me. That's why I have to readjust your relationship with the person. You are taking advantage of me. You are not sincere. But I don't have any problem with you. I forgive you. In fact, I'm going to readjust this relationship now. Are you with me? Okay. Now, the level two. On the intermediate level, the person is obligated to bless God for the bad things and for the good things. You are obligated to bless God both for the good things that happen in your life and for the bad things that happen in your life. Pardon? That that's the next level, intermediate level. BTS, that's the BTS. Are you with me? Because God is good all the time. Now, Psalm 119, the verse 71 to verse 72. Psalm 119, verse 70. One to verse 72, the Bible says, and I like it, Psalm, the Bible says, it was good for me to be, to have been afflicted. It was good for me, Jerry, to have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than a thousand of coins of gold and silver. It was good for Brother Jerry to have been afflicted. Now, if I did not uh, break up with my ex girlfriend, in those days I was weeping, I remember, oh, I wrote a letter and uh, I, I caught myself. I do some notes. No. And as we saw it, she was a skateboard in the march. And I only gave two more months with her. I let you come with me on the 15th of uh, February. She doesn't want to break, break up with my mind. <laughs> I was uh, afflicted because I was unequally yoked now with a believer. That's how my life started to go from bad to worse. Uh, because of that relationship, I started to work in bad environment. I started to smoke, to drink, and all of that. But when that relationship came to an end, I ran to the house of the Lord. And today I have a picture. It was good. That's why God wants you to thank him for what you think is bad that happened to you. Because God had a uh, Someone left you. The father of the son left you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Do we want the father of the son to be in the picture? Yes. But sometimes also the guy is very irresponsible. He's going to do more emotional damage. The children constantly are rejecting them, rejecting them. So when you look back in hindsight, he says it was good that he left because it was very, very toxic. I did not know any better how to choose. But now I see. And don't worry, your children are going to do well. They are going to have the master's degrees, they are going to have the PhD degrees. Look at God and the life of your children. Are you with me? Instead of staying in some that you're constantly fighting with the children, are witnessing the violence and the rejection. 
and also the theory of infidelities, which are going to affect the children as well. So in everything, we give uh, thanks uh, to God. It is not ideal that God has a future in man. It was good that uh, this person, uh, for instance, uh, betrayed me. Do you know what? Some people need to betray you, like Judas. So I am not going to share with your glory. The Bible says that the rich man has a lot of friends, but the poor man, even his brothers, run away from him. That's why sometimes God brings you to a time of famine when you have nothing. Why? Because God wants to find away all the people that uh, are toxic, that are like uh, leeches. The leech has only two daughters. And this give, 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 give. They want to stop life after give. So all those people are not think from because of um, your status, your money, and so on and so forth. God is going to use God's life to your life into the hands of the to bring you some time of uh, wilderness experience so that uh, the wrong people can leave you. Your own friends can leave. And those that are going to stay are going to be the one that truly love you for who you And then now God is going to lift you up, make you very rich. And they are going to go back. Hey, we know you. No, 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 you left me. Now you are wise. God wants you to have also emotional intelligence. So it was good that you were afflicted because you did not know how to choose life partners according to the life. You did not know how to choose friends. And you don't have realize that uh, no, they were drinking bodies. Once I stopped drinking, we were no longer friends. I was talking with an Indian uh, lady, and she said, it is hard, to, we were in England, said, it is hard to be friends with English. So we are not drinking, well, what do we have in common? They were find the English that are not uh, drinking. The answer is the answer. God will bring you through a period in your life that you will feel like you are afflicted. But God is removing the wrong people from your life. It's good that some people left the church. Are you with me? When they went to war, God said the first thing to Moses, all those who are fearful, I don't believe that you are going to win. I don't believe that they are you are going to mount when they I don't believe that the church is going anywhere. Tell them to go away. And we give you on the two third left. Out of the 30,000, 30,000 left. And then God said, There are too many. There are also those that are proud of you. They are so concerned about the, their ego and they want to take the glory of God. We are the one who did it. Without our money, without our health, the church would have been nothing. We would have never conquered this. Was a tell them also. To go away. So, 9,700 left. And it was only left with 1% of the initial number. With 1%, with 300 before the face of And there was 1% that were with him. They were loyal to God and loyal to him. And the vision that God gave him, he said, the soul of the Lord is so good. The Lord was not shocking. God was on the knees. We are behind you, Gideon. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, you need to start with 1%. Now, when you start having the 
victories. Now, all the other tribes that say that uh, without them, we cannot make it. The Israelites, they will now join. And when they are going to jump, they are going to be on your terms. You will get one more turn in the beginning. Because if you start with them, they are going to say, We are the majority. We need to have both and the vision. And they are going to divert the vision of God. They are going to divert the vision of your business. When you start the business, don't look for associates. Nothing about When not the business is established, then you can have partners, but when they are coming, they know whether they bring the money or not. Your business is going to continue. You have the, what they call the, the share. You are the major shareholder at the. So don't be afraid to be alone in the beginning. Don't be afraid. The same thing as well for marriage. If you are looking for a finished product, women who are looking for a finished product, the more tired, millionaire guy, you guys are going to treat you like a rubbish because you never contributed anything in his life. But if you suffer with that person, you are going to raise him. With the person, the same thing for the kingdom. If you suffer with Christ, you are going to reign with him. Don't come not when you've already established everything you are never going to be to mention in that kind of situation. John Mark, one thing you can touch in the ministry, you let the ball. God was busy, left for dead, and then God continued the ministry at last. He was now everywhere. And then John Mark said, Oh, I need to join. I need to visit Macedonia. Was all oh, my dear body. My dear work beating me up. You said you are on the work. And I said, No, it's my cousin, you know. It's not the family business here. It's the kingdom business. And the guy says his mother on the cow, his new work is not fit for the kingdom. I'm not working the game. It's never come down, take the glory of oh, it. It's not suffering with us. God will use some um, uh, hardship to remove the wrong people from your life. So it was good to have afflicted. Even in death, sometimes you think if I marry that man, oh, but if you had married him for two years at any time, you can be a so you are going to be a widow. This has the plan for our life. Romans chapter 8 to verse 28. The Bible says, when you are a Christian, all things work together for good. Because you are the God, the God according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things in your life is going to work together for good. If I'm not going to don't give you that detention center. The only way for me to get out uh, that thing that like the lawyer said to me was to marry someone which I will not be with my dead body, was to impregnate a woman which I will not be with my dead body, or to get the minister's visa with the church that I was working with. And I worked for them for 10 years. They never tried to get the religious visa to me. So why would they do that now? But by going there, I found a way to defend myself. So when I came out, my visa was my visa. It was not the work visa that would depend on that. So if I don't look for it, he reports me to the home office, and I need to go up to France or wherever I came from. But now I had my own visa. I could do whatever I could do on the bridge. The bridge. If I want to work, I can work. They are not my school soul. And the church that I was working for, they can sponsor my visa, so I don't owe them anything. I can walk out of that church, which I did. I don't want to be thinking free. I start looking for that church to be. 
If I did not uh, do what I did, I would not be on CPN today, I would not be going to India, and so on and so forth. And now they offered me a salary. I say, no, I don't need any salary. I was with you for 10 years, you did not give me any salary. What do you make? What do you make you feel that it was money that I was after? It was never about the money. I'm in love with Jesus. Out my nose. Jesus. Number of my soul. If you people call me from uh, uh, Milton Keynes, Baptist Church, wanted to give me a parish with a pastor that is at the house of the preacher and a car and 24,000. Pounds a salary relocate to, to meet the kids. I said, No, I can't do that. But only for them to find two cents. How much are you earning today? Nothing. I know I have nothing today. But I know what God has shown me. Many of you are sacrificing the greatness of God and settling for mediocrity in your life. But if you come up for a little while, God is going to glorify you. He's going to glorify you if you suffer for a little while. I know what I'm doing. If you suffer for a little while, God is going to glorify you. So don't be afraid of uh, suffering. Now, Satan will need things for people. And sometimes, mankind also will be faithful evil in your life. But God will turn it for good. Genesis chapter 15, verse 20. Genesis chapter 15, verse 20. Joseph said to his brothers, As for you, you meant evil against me. But God will make it for good. Order to bring it about as it is at this day to save many people alive. So let me thank God, even what you have been saying to you. Today, they are regretting letting me go. They say, oh, Jerry, we like people like you. Why don't you come back? I said, I'll never come back. Because what I'm seeing is to be. I was praying with her. Uh, with your mother. And then she said, Oh, she blessed me, Amen. She blessed me, Amen. And I said, Lord, oh, she asked me to pray, oh, Lord, let me do about 3,000 churches. So 10,000, 10 times is about 30,000 churches, and that's what is the number that God has shown me. Are you with me? So, if I order to be over 3,000 churches, I'm limiting what God can do for me. And I'm just going to go back as a pastor, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, no, can I say I'm going to be the general receiver at work? No. If I be a generous one with you. And God has given me a vision. I have tens of thousands of churches. Why would I settle for something that small? When you have seen what is in the spirit, nobody can uh, it is faith is a substance. For you, it is already a reality. Even if you have no faith in the pocket. I see myself already in India. I see myself already preaching to thousands of uh, people. I see myself already with hundred lands doing crusades. I see myself already with baby in doing crusades. I see. And what I see comes to pass. This is not a vision I have seen that did not come to pass. That's why I told you about them in those my week to week. But Jeremiah wrote this vision, it came to pass. No more than that. Go to this fucking me, what I will come to pass. What about the mother children? We are the one that has to make what Father Abraham did. But I think you are going to lie to me. I'm going to take care of my nation, Lord. Because it is not law. Separate yourself from law. Okay, God. I did it, but I'm not trusting you. Maybe the way to deceive me. Let me try to move up. Yeah, we have missionary ministries. 
nicht im meisten Business ist. Da war ein Schluss, die da ist nicht der Mann, das ist schon gesagt. He has a good plan for you. Imagine if Ruth remained the Moabites, never converted to Christ. We would never know her name. She became a widow. Some people are going to say, oh, what a pity. But in everything, give her thanks to God. If you are a pagan, I don't know. I want you to refresh me. There is always hope of Christians. The moment he decided to embrace the God of Mehut and follow the Mehuni, that's the way when you make up your mind to be a Christian. Don't be a Christian that is like one of the tigers. One foot in and one foot out. The tigers fell off the window and they died. You cannot be no more in an house. We God, there is no Switzerland. Switzerland does not exist in the kingdom. I'm a new floor. No, 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 no. The creator called for you are. If you are called, the one for you are that was people that they love. Today I'm not going to be able to enjoy the benefits of the. You choose where you are standing. And if you stand with the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, I'm neither for you nor for your enemies. I am on the Lord's side. So we should start with the Lord and Jesus. The problem of the salvation of the Lord is right here. So my job is to be in alignment with the God and His Word. And I know everything is going to work out for me. That's why those years I was sitting in the street, I was never different. And I was shouting to the way I was shouting today. Because I knew God would not lie. I knew He was bigger than those who were making me evil, even to the world. God was going to turn it up. And we know what happened in the roof. She married boys. And they gave birth to Jesus. Just they gave birth to the great king of Israel. And then he gave the grandfather as the third of Jesus. God had a great destiny for you. But stand with him. Don't be one foot in and one foot out. Be all in and you are going to see what the Lord is going to do for you. The truth of the matter is that we only see our life in parts. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 to verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 to verse 13. We only see things in part. You only think right now the pain that you are going through. But God can show you what is beyond the pain. Ruth could only see she was now a widow. You can only see that now you are single. You are broken hearted. You don't have a job. You are seeing only in part. And if you stick with the Lord, she had no hope of marriage. They only said to her, go back. If you see the marriage that you are looking for in that church, there is no hope. But she found the marriage. Come on, Jesus. God works in mysterious ways. They told her there is no hope for marriage where we are going. She said, I'm going. He started to follow Jesus. So we only for we know in part, and we only prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is uh, imperfect will be born. The time is going to come. God is going to unfold his vision for your life in front of you. And you're going to see these beautiful, marvelous in our hands. For I encourage each one of you, you have a great future. Speak with Jesus. And uh, you are going to be amazed. Your life is going to be transformed.
for good. Your children are going to be transformed. For good. They are going to turn out good children in the name of Jesus. Let me share a testimony with you in my village. In my village, there was a the lady, our neighbor, the neighbor, my grandmother. The son of the neighbors impregnated that sister. And they did not want to have anything to do with uh, the mother and uh, the son. Okay? So the mother raised up the son by herself. He never even met his father. He went to school from the village, he went to the capital, he studied. And then he got the bursary, he went to France to study finance, and the son became the governor of the Bank of Western Africa, the CIFA. So the son that he discarded became the governor of the bank. Not the bank of your country, the bank of a whole economical zone. For instance, you have Ecuador in West Africa. Now, in the French West Africa, we have the CIFA. So, so it became uh, the governor central bank. So, we were by the multi billionaire. And now the father wants to have a tactic again. Hello, you know, I am his father. He would use some adjustment for greatness. Your daughters are destined for greatness. I don't know, foolish man. That abandon them, they are going to be the friends. They are going to see what they do for the children in Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory for all that you are doing tonight, not this morning. And I give you all the praise. Thank you for what we have learned. Let us apply in our life and let us bear fruit for your glory. We bless you for this week. In Jesus' the precious name, Amen. Amen. So let also share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Have some tea, have some coffee, and talk to someone, talk to someone. You don't know what they are going to do, so give them a big hug in Jesus' name.